Hey, what's up folks? One of the cool features that Mapbox added to GLJS version 2 when they went closed source was the 3D terrain. And I don't really care about 3D terrain. Mecklenburg County is basically a pancake. Our lowest point is around 200 feet. Our highest is around 800 feet. If you're not into freedom units, that's what? 60 meters to 250-ish meters? So, pancake. Not very useful for us, but still pretty cool, especially if you live in a mountainous region and you map that. I've always been jealous of people that live in mountainous regions and do mapping. Sure, an occasional landslide will take out a village, but the maps are just gorgeous. Yeah. Map Libre, which by the way is just an incredible project. Uh, I saw a video they did on upcoming features and one of them was 3D terrain slated for the 2.2 release and the 2.2.0 pre-2 pre-release is out and Bert Teme, I hope I have not murdered that, I apologize if I did, made this really cool observable page with a demo of it. You can see the pre-release here and some 3D terrain. You can go flying through the mountains and looking up river valleys and it is cool stuff. So I had to play around with it, even though Mecklenburg is a pancake. And they've got uh, really great directions here. You'll follow the links from the observable page. You'll end up over here. And it will tell you how to modify your GLJS style file for the source and the layers and the terrain. And it will even, which is awesome, tell you how to make your own MB tiles file with terrain. And what they're using is a JAXA AW3D30DSM files. These are uh, 30 meter pixel resolution DEM files you can download for free. You do need to sign up for a login to download, but that's all free. And then they give you a bash file to string those tips together and turn them into MB tile files. Now, just walking you through the code, it basically does a Google build vert to create a vert of the tips. There'll be more than one for depending on the area you download. Then a Google warp to warp that vert into a warped vert. So you still haven't written any big files yet. And then you're using an RGBify extension to Restereo to convert that into an MB tiles file. It's basically converting your one band DEM into a RGB file that the client, on the client end, it can interpret back into elevations. Cool, cool stuff. Oh, and after you build that file, you need to manually add an index to your tiles table in SQLite or that shit will be slow. And it, it doesn't do that for you when it makes the MB tiles file. So I ran this pretty much verbatim. I, I went to their to the site and downloaded the JAXA data for my study area. I, of course, needed to do four different downloads because Mecklenburg County is right on four tile boundaries of everything. But then it kind of looks like this. And you can see, uh, so hopefully, through YouTube, you can see the, over here we can get some mountain mountains, which are kind of neat. But Mecklenburg, of course, doesn't get those because we don't get anything good. Uh, it is cool stuff. You can go in. Now, we don't have any hills or mountains, but we do have an orifice, and we can check that out. This is a mining orifice, and we can tilt a little bit. You can see that's an actual 3D shape. Ah, cool. Now, 30 meter pixel DM is not, I mean, that's in freedom units. That's like 90 feet. That's a, uh, it's awesome that it's there as a resource. It's not great in terms of detail. You'll see this is just kind of, kind of blurry. You can't, can't really tell just how deep into the depths of hell we're getting into with this strip mine. So, I used one of our own DM files, which is a 10 foot pixel resolution, which is more like three meters 
uh, which is much more detailed, but it's only for Mecklenburg County. And we're gonna see that that has some implications in a moment. Now the script I use is basically the same one they are sharing with you here. It's a little bit simpler because I'm not doing as much stuff. So I'm taking Mecklenburg's uh, DM TIFF file and I'm making a, I'm warping that to a vert to 3857, the one true projection. And I'm just RGBifying that. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting, uh, about RGBify, well, there's two things. One is there, there might be kind of a bug. Uh, when I was running this, I kept running into an error that said, uh, densify underscore PTS for a geographic needs at least two something. And I went digging through the RGBify code and in the code is this mbtoller.py and it just has this densify underscore pts equals zero on this one line. I just deleted that entirely, hoping it was, there's a default parameter there and there was and everything ran fine. But if you ran into that, uh, I just pip installed this and then I went into, on Linux, it's like local lib python 3 point something, yeah, dug back to it and just deleted this little bit and it ran fine. The other thing to notice is it would whinge a lot when it ran. It would run and finish, but it give various errors and warnings and generally whine a lot. If it's set to PNG as the output, I changed that to WebP and it was quiet as a mouse and just ran fine. The other bon benefit of WebP is that the MB tiles file was small. It was about a third smaller. Not that it makes much of a difference. Zoom level seven to 13 for our 10 foot Mecklenburg DM as a PNG is 30 megabytes, as a WebP it's 20 megabytes. So neither one of them is gonna kill you. But that's the script I ran for that. Very straightforward. And it's, it's basically just like the other stuff. I just don't need to build a vert for multiple tips because I just have the one and everything else is basically the same. Cool. Now, I mentioned some problems with the Mecklenburg thing. Let's take a look at that. And, and memorize the orifice here. Because we're going to see how it changes with detail. So we're going to take out this uh, JAXA 30 meter pixel stuff. And I just called Mecklenburg's terrain because not creative. Save that. We're going to refresh here. You'll see the immediate problem. Because I only have Mecklenburg terrain, uh, it looks like Mecklenburg kind of looks like, uh, like the top of that mountain the aliens landed on on Close Encounters because everything else is flat. So it's, it's a weird look. Um, you can kind of nullify that by, well, I'll show you how to do this thing. You can see it's a lot more detailed. Um, if we go into our orifice, you can see, you can actually see where there are roads going down in there and all kinds of hills and, and stuff around it that you couldn't see before. Now, how I would, I mean, it's not really a fix, but what you can do is just give it a higher min zoom for your DM source. So let's go, go to like 11. So now it won't start doing that until you're in pretty close and like right here. And by then, hopefully they're more into your subject area and not like looking at over there for some reason. <laughs> it might go totally unnoticed. But look how cool that is. You can go, and of course this is much, this is 10 times finer resolution than the 30 meter stuff. But it is really cool. Now, again, I won't go over too much about the styling because they lay it out very well right here, and I'll, I'll give you that link. One thing they do that I thought was a little strange is, is they 
when they set it up, they set up a terrain source and a hillshade source, but it's the exact same thing. So I probably could just get away with one there, which is what I did. And go down here to the layers. There's two. Outside of the layers, there's this terrain, which is uh, the terrain source for the whole map. And exaggeration is what it modifies the your stuff by. So see if we can blow it up a little bit, make Mecklenburg look a little more interesting. Oh, we gotta zoom back in to get to our orifice. Now we go deep, deep. <laughs> yeah, if you wanna. Oh, that is your train. It lives outside. Sorry, forget. Guys are getting old. Let me make that bigger lives outside the layers just as its own thing. And our hill shade has all kinds of options. If you look in like, uh, the only reason I'm looking at the map, out doc, map box docs and the map, not the map library docs is because map library docs doesn't have terrain on it yet. Um, but if you look at hill shade, there's all kinds of options for accent colors and exaggerations and highlight colors and illumination stuff and I didn't do any of that. I'll, I'll probably play around with that at some point. If I use this for anything again, pancake. Let me, yeah, I, I made it look like, oh, like what in the hell is that? That's exaggerated still. You can also, it, it will wrap or uh, you know, apply flush any raster overlays. Like when you see their example here, this is an OSM raster layer. So we can go in and put in our satellite layer. And refresh this. And when we get close enough, go back to our orifice. You can see it, it is wrapping the uh, the imagery to the terrain. So you can actually see it dip in here when it goes into a little river valley. Things like that. So you can do that with rasters as well, not just your, your vectors. Anyway, it's really cool stuff. It's still a pre-release. I still, I do see in the console some some error messages here and there, and they're probably still working out the kinks. So I don't know that I'd roll anything into production with that, but uh, it is looking good. And a big thank you to the Map Libre folks for adding this. Not really my bag here in Pancake Land, but I can. Uh, I know this is going to help a lot of people. So cool. I will put this little bit of code, I guess, in the. Uh, in the blog post and put all the links and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.